Hi guys. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how the social media app Facebook um, was made for everybody to use. Now, you may wonder what is Facebook or who can use it, but I will be explaining everything in this video. Um, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Michaela and I am a communication student at SFU. Now that's enough about me and let's start talking about what Facebook is. Facebook is a platform where you can share thoughts, photos, and videos. It even has other functions such as a marketplace where you can sell your used goods or private messaging, games, tons of things like that. It's a real place where people can come together. Facebook is actually one of the biggest social media apps having about 2.7 billion users according to statistica.com. 2.7 billion users, that is a lot of people. Let's talk more about who can use Facebook. Anyone can use Facebook. As long as you are 13 years of age and have internet and a device, you are all set. Let's break down how old people are in that 2.7 billion. So according to statista.com, about 6% of users are ages 13 to 17, about 23% of users are aged 18 to 24, 32% are aged 25 to 34, about 17% are 35 to 44 years old, and about 10% are 45 to 54, and about 6% is 55 to 64 years old. One of the most diverse social media platforms. There's ages all the way from 13 to 64 years old, and who knows, there could there is probably people that are even older that were just not involved in these statistics. Now I wanna talk about Rheingold's literacies. Um, I'm going to specifically talking about the ones collaboration, participation, and critical consumption. Let's start off with collaboration. Collaboration, according to Rheingold, can happen when people just use a social media platform. It is evident that in Facebook, people collaborate. Facebook can be used to spread information to tons of people in a short amount of time. Facebook users are able to come together in different types of groups and to, are able to comment and share their own ideas on posts. With this also, you can make groups on Facebook with people that you can make certain events or certain beliefs and stuff like that. And it can be a place where everybody can post into that group. Um, now I wanna talk about participation. Participation is also a big one and can be seen in many places on Facebook. So on Facebook, users are able to post, comment, and share whenever they please. This gives each user the ability to participate all over the Facebook platform. An example of somebody participating in something could be them posting a picture with a certain hashtag. And in that hashtag, there's a bunch of photos that go into that one topic. Something like that could be participation or even commenting on a photo, what your um, ideas are on that, that's all participation. So next I want to talk about critical consumption, which is gonna be the final literacy I'm going to be talking about today. So on Facebook, fake news can be a big problem. Um, we've seen this during the pandemic in the last year and we have to decide what we want to believe that's on Facebook. We have to critically think about how and what we are reading and always be aware that it can be fake and decide what we believe is real and what we believe is fake. So critical consumption is very important and I think that Facebook um, um, gives us the ability to critically think about something and consume it in a critical way. Um, so it is clear, I hope that it's clear to you guys that Facebook is an awesome social media app with so many different features. The best part is that as long as you are 13 years of age, you can be one of the billion people that is actively using it right now. If you don't have Facebook, I really think you should get it. I love it, I use it, and uh, so many other people love it too. It just lets you connect with so many people. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.